For the first time in more than five and a half years, we finally tonight have a few new answers to a question that has loomed over Indiana and over the town of Delphi. Who killed Abby Williams and Libby Turner? From the end of the bridge to, you gotta go through. Now, I believe that the bodies were found about Movement born from a family's grief and determination. In April of 2020, Army soldier Vanessa Guillen went missing while stationed at one of the largest military installations. You hear that little music in the background, it goes, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Right. He knew about it or was there. It's, he's as guilty as the person who committed Chilling the details in the arrest of a suspected serial killer caught before he could strike again. Him, they, they, they dropped the ball, man. Like, they said he went AWOL. Mm. And that, uh, that he was a deserter, and nobody went to look for him. Today is not a day to celebrate. But the arrest of Richard M. Allen of Delphi on two counts of murder. Like I said, we're going back. We were asked last time to kind of talk about the food, uh, the grub truck video and kind of give our perspective of it. The, the, the press release from the police department and indicate that they're still trying to put pieces together from that night. It, does that does that worry you in any, at any point uh, or at any bit that they're still trying to put those pieces together? It's been over five weeks since little Kaylee Anthony vanished. Her mother, Casey, has been arrested for lying to police. She's being held without bail. from the year 3000 it still sucks this is Phil J. Fry and you're listening to the Drunken Turkey Show you're one stop for this sort of thing hit that button like and subscribe you know what to do just like every other podcast just like every other podcast what is up everybody Big Blue welcome back to the house how you doing my man what's going on everyone doing good doing good Looking good, man. I know you've been out busy. You've been working. You've been uh, putting in the overtime. I hope you haven't uh, burned both ends of the candles too much, have you? There's there's some days I have been, man. There's some days like last week I was unlucky to not be able to get the day off, so I had to go to work, get out like with 30 minutes to spare, you know, change in the bathroom, and then go to class 8 to 5. So... It's one of those days, man. It is, my man. Well, you know what? When you get to the end of the tunnel, uh, you know, I know it's a long and windy one, but when you finally get there, it'll be all well, well worth it. Yeah. So today, guys, we're going to be talking about, you know, everybody's favorite topic, you know, the Brian Koberger case. Now, there's been a few documents that have been dropped in, in the last couple of days. Uh, we're going to go over some of those documents or one specific document and then Blue, you haven't read the alibi at all, have you? I know you've been busy. No, I haven't. I, I've only seen a couple of like news reportings of it, but I haven't read it. Awesome. So we're going to go right back through it because there were some people who were a little bit confused about it. They, they made themselves well, well, well known how confused they were about some of the things that were in there. So we'll go through it extra slow. And then we'll talk about the... Um, the exculpatory evidence that's available check that out apparently they're oh, apparently we found it we'll see what it is um but without any further ado let's uh break down the newest documents that were were shared all right let me see let me put this there you go <clears throat> and so this is the motion order prohibiting contact so i don't i don't know if you remember, and I'll give you a little quick refresher here recently, there was a uh, argument basically between the defense and the prosecution over the survey that was going out to the local community, uh, possibly tainting the, um, you know, the jury that is out there by putting out information that may or may not have been true or false. And in that information, we found out that apparently Brian Koberger was not stalking one of the victims, which is what was said. Uh, do you recall that information, Big Blue? Yeah, I remember that it was in the beginning, it was a theory, but then they said that there was no online stalking that they were able to find. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So 
let's uh let's look at this real quick so this is the motion of order prohibiting contact with prospective jurors and i'm not going to go through all the pages here because it's just basically the same stuff that they were arguing in court but then it gets a little bit interesting let's see Let's start off right here. The state's concern with the survey commissioned by the defense is that it may violate the court's revised amended non-dissemination order in in a manner that could make selecting a jury in Lataw County more difficult. As relevant here, the order expressly prohibits any agents of the prosecuting attorneys or defense attorneys of making any out of court statement, which a reasonable person would expect to be decimated by means of public communications uh, communication it relates to thank you meg for gifting 10 drunk turkey show memberships we appreciate that also guys uh, a little bit later we're going to go members only on the live chat you know everybody will still be able to see it obviously they just won't be able to communicate it's one of our perks for those members make sure you hit the join button if you want to become a member turn on your gifts as yeah. meg just gifted 10 of them thank you again Get the 10 of them so you guys can be members and angel is already starting the drinks. You know what? I have I have some, I have a six pack in the in the fridge. I may end up bringing it out here in a little bit. I had some great news today, and so um, I might just have to bring it out here in a minute. All right, let's get back to this big blue. It says here uh, uh, the identity and nature of the evidence expected to be presented in trial, sentencing phases of proceedings. All right, let's continue. It says despite these express prohibits prohibits blah, prohibition. Um, Damn it. Besides, <laughs> I haven't even started drinking that beer yet. Besides these express limitations, the defense commissioned a survey that included potential jurors from Latal County. As part of that survey conveyed the identity of or nature of evidence expected to be presented at trial order page two. And there's a redacted part here. Right now, here's where it gets even more interesting. This more problematic, still the Defense's Commission survey also included in the survey specific rumors, which the defense should have known are likely to be inadmissible in trial. Order page two, for example, the question that implies Brian Koberger had followed one of the victims on social media. There it is, guys. It wasn't that he wasn't stalking the house. He wasn't stalking them in person. It was a social media stalking that they were referring to and as i said multiple times and i've said it more than once occasions it wouldn't fit the mo or the profile that i have created for who or why i think this case had created or it was committed if the person was following one of the victims i yeah. would have said if somebody was following one of the victims they would have gotten caught a long time ago a long time ago and they wouldn't have needed the igg or any of those things so this isn't the non-stocking, the, the times that the car was driving around those 12 other times, that's still going to be in play, y'all. That's still going to be in play. What do you think, Big Blue? Yeah, so I think that, that uh, I think we they had already mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's not new news, but to some people it is. Well, me. It, the defense tried to flip it and reverse it <laughs> oh yeah and and say that that when when thompson went out and said that there was no evidence of him stalking one of the victims that that also included the 12 times that he was outside of their house mm -hmm. and this is to show that that's not what they were talking about they were talking about a social media stalking yeah you get what i'm saying yeah yeah you tried to you know they tried to do a missy elliott <laughs> uh, I, I can't do it the way she does it, man. She does it too quick, quickly. The, the too quickly, the the flipping and the reversing. <laughs> yeah. She says, uh, "Make a flip." Ah, I can't even say it. Uh, tongue, dude, tongue twisted already. The, you just got to say it slow. Figure out what it says. Somebody will edit that up, put some reverb, and and it'll be a <laughs> song before you know it. Ella comes in with her member for thirteen months, saying, "Hello, everyone. Hello, member." And Mod Heather, thank you so much for tuning in. And Meg gifted another five Drunk Turkey Show memberships. Wow, thank you so much. We appreciate you, Meg. Thank you, Meg. Yeah. All right, so Blue. Let me. Well, let me see. Let me see if this ended up. I think this ended up not going in the favor 
of the defense, which I've, it kind of sucks for that guy, their expert. But well, let me see. I don't know if it, if it did or not. I thought it said something about it being granted um, over here, but I don't know. I'd have to go through it more. But if it ended up being that it was suppressed, right, or the survey was stopped and it was found that the questions that this guy was using or doing or saying in the survey were to find or were to be uh, found to, I guess, taint the jury. I think that's going to limit his future job earnings and job opportunities if this becomes something known as you know, a junk survey. What do you think? Yeah, I was distracted, so my bad. <laughs> I was getting the lyrics so I can say it. Okay, here it is. It says, is it worth it? Let me work it. I'll put my thing down and flip it and reverse it. Tie a reverse DNA to fifth foot. I can't even say it. There you go. There, there you go. No, somebody needs to. It's wet. No, somebody needs to go and get that and, and turn that into some sort of hilarious TikTok or some, something or another. <laughs> But hey, Blue, hang on real quick. I got to jump out. Don't give me one second. You take oh, over real okay. quick. Yeah, yeah. Let me try. I can't read. Let me see. Yes, I, I see. Uh, you try saying those lyrics back and forth a few times. You'll get tongue twisted too. I'm dyslexic worse than Daniel is. So. Let me see. I also did want to say make also gifted five more drunk turkey memberships. So make sure y'all make sure yeah, I can hear you. Make sure y'all turn on your gifts. That way you can get a free membership. And when we go to members only, y'all can still be able to chat on there. You know it. You know it. So you know, this here tells me that. <clears throat> that the the stalking is still in play when it comes to the 12 times that Brian Koberger was outside of that house. You know, I, I found it concerning, you know, when when Thompson came out and and said that there was no evidence of that and I felt like it was a surprise to the defense team because you actually saw them kind of look at each other including Brian Koberger like they all looked at each other like I can't believe this guy said there's no evidence of me stalking these people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that wasn't the case. Now, I think that Thompson was you know, just kind of heated and, and upset and probably put his foot in his mouth. He needs to calm down on his emotions there a little bit. You know what I mean? And Yeah. Uh, like, even in the first couple of court hearings that, that he's come out, man, he's like like an ass. Like, I, that's what he comes out to me like. Like the way he talks just like to the judge and stuff like, hey, you're just trying to get some information in. And it's like, you're already trying to rebuttal everything. It's like the information hasn't came out yet to rebuttal something. You know? Well, I think I think he's kind of tired of the defense's crap. You know, they, they've accused him of like, you know, withholding information or evidence when the FBI wasn't turning over stuff for the IGG, you know, claiming that they're withholding exculpatory evidence, which we're going to go over you know, in a little bit, um, you know, things like that. And. And the arguments that they've had and have won to a certain extent, I feel like Judge Judge is also kind of, you know, finally getting a backbone, so to speak. Um, it started when he denied the the defense the ability to appeal to the Idaho Supreme Court, uh, referencing the grand jury um, and the the statute of Jan grand jury um, being beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, Jordan comes in with a one nine nine super chat saying, "Did he follow on SM?" just coming in no he didn't follow anybody online um he, he, he well at least not on any account that has been linked to him at this point now i wouldn't be surprised if he was on some sort of burner account and was following yeah. you know the the girls on a burner account that you can't link to him that burner account is probably buried somewhere i mean it is on a, it is on a tablet buried somewhere or on a laptop buried somewhere you know what I mean? Same place where the uh, murder weapon is. Oh yeah, Same yeah. Place. Uh, so let's know. let's look at this alibi blue. I want I wanted to go through with this with you because a lot of people have looked at this and have said that, oh man, this proves that Brian Koberger is innocent. 
This proves he wasn't there. They have experts, yada, 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 right? So let's break this down one, one bit at a time. So it says here, Mr. Koberger moved to Pullman, Washington in June of 2022. As an avid runner, hiker, he explored many areas of the Palouse. Of note, he explored the Wawa We or Wawa Wai Park in July of 2022. And this became his favorite location. First and foremost, when you start reading that, does that sound who do you think that this is is um Who's the audience that, that you think the defense is trying to capture here? Do you think that this is something that they're trying to capture the attention of the judge by speaking in this story format? Or do you think that this is a uh, something to capture the YouTubers and, and people talking about this? I think it's, yeah, I think it's not really for the judge. I mean, but he's trying to paint a picture of his like um, life before this happened. But I think it's more for... I think it's going to be for, more for a jury. All right. Well, the jury's not going to see or hear this yet. Yeah. Now, eventually, she's going to paint this picture in front of them. Yeah. But this right here, in my opinion, is to try to get get some stuff out, put it out there, because this isn't saying a whole lot of nothing. In fact, I think this actually hinders or hurts Koberger a lot. So it says here, of note, he explored Wawa Y Park in July of 2022 and became his favorite location. After the school year began, Koberger was busy with classes and work at Washington State University and his running and hiking decreased but did not stop. Instead, his nighttime drives increased. Now, we know that he was driving quite a bit. I mean, especially the night of the incident. If, if he is saying what he is saying is true, that he was out driving around, right? If he was out driving around, which if he does... Would you consider him saying that he stopped somewhere to do anything, whether it was merely park or or watch the stars or look at the ground? Would that would you consider that a change of story if he went from I was driving around to I stopped somewhere now? No, yeah, I mean it, it. It could be because he can say I, I went to the park. I don't even. I honestly haven't even seen where that right. park is in the map. Right, see right, how right. close it is to like their home or their workplaces or the school. Right, right. And we're going to get into that. We're going to look at all that here in a minute. And I'm glad you haven't looked at any of it because this makes this perfect. All right. So this is here that um, instead as nighttime drives increase, this is supported by data from Mr. Koberger's phone showing him in the countryside late at night or in the early morning hours on several occasions. The phone data includes numerous photographs taken on several different late evenings and early mornings. So this says several different evenings and mornings, including in November. Depicting the night sky. Did, did you did it say anywhere there that it was specifically November 13th, 2022? No. So so what they're doing here is they're they're saying that they're using words that are going to capture an audience like early morning hours, late, late, late night, early morning, November picture of the sky, because you have those that are so tunnel vision into wanting him to be innocent so bad that if they see those little things there, they're going to automatically assume that all of this that right now that we have read up to this point has anything to do with November 13th. All right. To this yeah. point, right now, he does say at one point that they that he does go to Wawa We Park throughout the night, but doesn't say when. Well, we'll, let, we'll get into it. So let's go. Mr. Koberger was out driving in the early morning hours of November 13th, as he often did uh, to hike, run and or see the moon and stars. Now, he's saying he's they're saying he's out driving in the morning as he did to hike and see or, or, or hike or run and see the moon and stars. It's not necessarily saying that he was driving out that morning to hike and run or see the moon and stars. Do you understand what I'm saying there, Blue? Yeah. yeah I'm going to say, you know, I'm like everybody else, you can't go hiking at night without going down a lit trail or having a lot of lights because there's a there's a run, a famous run they have here in San Antonio that they do. It's a nighttime run. It's like a 3K or there's a small one. Yeah. But half the contestants come back 
Give another have their flashlight and whatever light they're using to run. Come back with injuries because they trip the whole yeah. way. It's called the yeah. Chupacabra run. Oh dang! Yeah, you know, San Antonio, that check that one out. Like, they do it at night. All right. Well, here here's the other thing though, Blue. When it comes to this, when you go and look at the weather that night, it was foggy, uh, overcast, icy, and cold. Are those are those the conditions you're going to go hiking, running, or trying to look at the moon or the stars? No, not by myself. <laughs> I mean, how are you going to see the moon and stars? Period. If it's there's there's clouds above you, it's overcast, and you're in a fog. Yeah, and especially like in the moist conditions that it is, it's uh, really easy to get hypothermic out there, man. Yeah. True story. So this just says he was out driving in the early morning hours as he did when he would go hiking or running. Not that he was. He drove throughout the area south of Pullman, Washington, west of Moscow, Idaho, including Wawa Wee Park. Now, does it say what time he went to Wawa Wee Park? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. So it says, guys, I've been fishing at why 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 no cell phone coverage during winter you can get there just saying yeah my man but do you lose coverage in pullman all the way there when do you lose coverage that's that's when it's important you can get out there and lose coverage there Um, but what if you're losing coverage while you're on the east side of pullman and then you're traveling through pullman to get to the west side of of Pullman to surpass Pullman to go all the way down to the Wawa Wee Park. Right. So it's not just that he lost service on his way there. He lost service before he left town. Now, if that's an issue, shouldn't there be some sort of history? You know, whether it was it'd be documented through AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, whoever they are. I mean, there's a bunch of warrants out there. Wouldn't it be documented that there was an outage? I mean, there would be an area where they wouldn't be able to. Oh, I know, I know, but, but but he's in the middle of town. I, yeah, I, don't, care, no, I don't care about I don't care about the the rest of it. He lost coverage while he was on Nevada Street. So yeah, I mean, like he there he lose coverage. It either goes to roaming. So they, you still technically have coverage in certain areas, or it would be in and out, and his phone would be going in and out of service. It would be reading that. Right, exactly. It would go in and out, in and out. Not not the food place, unless you guys want to sponsor us. Hit us up, Drunk Turkey Show Gmail dot com. Waterburger is um, better, anyways. Okay, Waterburger is better. Waterburger, if you want to sponsor us, though. <laughs> 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 but uh, I, I, we digress. So he's they're saying there that through that night that he just drove throughout that area. Not that he stopped anywhere there. Not that he parked. That he was driving through there. Now they have partial cooperation it says mr koberger intends to offer testimony from a an expert that does sell towers and everybody gets all bent out of shape they get their their burger bk thong in a bunch or something and they put it on backwards because i didn't go through you know his 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 resume and kiss his ass apparently but you know this guy he's got an extensive resume in in cast or whatever the case may be the problem is I'm not debating him on what he's saying, and I'm not disagreeing with what he's saying. So this is what he's saying. It says that they intend to show that Brian Koberger's phone or device was south of Pullman, west of Moscow on Idaho on November 13th. All right. So let's stop right there. Let's pull this up. This is a map from the probable cause affidavit now it's kind of hard to see but right here where you see this little yellow hook thing that's where moscow is there's a little break right there and then you have this yellowness right here start up again well this is the highway and the route that brian coberger took this is the this is moscow big blue this i mean this yellow line here is just the um I think that's where they thought he may have traveled, but they don't have him pinged there. That's why there's a big blank space there. Yeah. His phone was off. Where, where would you say that the prosecution says that Brian Koberger's phone puts him at? Would you say that it puts him west of Moscow? 
Let's over here? East. Oh, uh, on the way back, yeah. No, 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 no. Well, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, here, here's Pullman West. You have West over here on this side, East over here on this side. This is going towards the, the ocean. So um, they have him here. And they have him here and they have him down here. So would you say that they have him west and south of Moscow? Yeah. And the do, place do where the phone should work the best, it ain't working. Right. But here's the thing. So um, does the off. prosecution ever say that his phone puts him in Moscow? Not that I know. That of. night. No, it doesn't. So he's literally saying literally saying the exact same thing that the prosecution is saying now the what they're saying in the pro, you know what the prosecution is saying is well the reason why his phone was not connected to the network was because he was out committing the murders now what the defense is saying is well his phone wasn't connected to the network so you can't say that he was in moscow you get what i'm saying those are the two different angles yeah you get what i'm saying so um and this here right here kind of tells us everything. It says um, the phone began to travel south through Pullman before going offline. At 448 is when his phone again connects and turns back on. So during the time he is suspected to have been in Moscow, his phone wasn't connected to the tower. So by them saying that their cast expert can say that his phone doesn't go into Moscow doesn't say anything. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, because they, you know, it was off for that amount of time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. I mean, I have to, I have to go real, real, real slow sometimes for some, but that's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's continue this. This says here, and this is where we're going to get into the exculpatory part, right? Um, it says here that uh, it says. Mr. Ray intends to, or the Cobra has testimony from Ray that his device was south of Pullman, Washington, and west of Moscow on the 13th, and that Brian Cobra's device did not travel east on the Moscow Pullman Highway in the early morning hours of November 13th, and thus could not be the vehicle captured on video along Moscow Pullman Highway near Floyd's Cannabis Shop. All right, so let's pull this up real quick. Oh, man. It, uh, let me put it right here real quick. Lloyd's Cannabis Shop. Which I believe tomorrow they're going to be giving some special guys. <laughs> hey, my dog is named Floyd, too. Did I ever tell uh, you the story like about the cannabis shop here in town? Nah, dude. Nah. So, Which one? I, 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 um, there's one on, uh, on Hildebrand. Okay. And it has a, there's, a, there's a sign flipper outside. Uh -huh. Right, and it says free weed, right? Oh, and, nice. and he's out there flipping the, the arrow sign. Yeah, so I'm driving, and it's a narrow road, man. There's like no sidewalk at all. I'm driving, and it's a windy day, and the wind blows the sign right into my grill of the car. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, Did he just hit my car with a sign? And I just keep driving, then all of a sudden, like, not even like two or three seconds later, the sign pops up. Like, I'll point at me saying free weed. So then I stop, right? And I <laughs> Real quick. Yeah. And then and then I stop, and the sign falls on the floor, and then I run it over, and then I was running late to school, so I had to keep going. Damn, so you're a hater. Hater. He probably, he probably lost his job because I took his sign for a ride for, like, a block and a half, so he had to walk to go get it. Dude. And that's pretty crippled because the next day I saw him trying to flip it, and it was taped. It was all Dude, taped I up. You're, you're basically the equivalent to those kids that beat up uh, Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker, yeah. Arthur Arthur Fleck. Remember when he's the he's the sign flipper and the yeah. kids go and beat him up and break the sign? Hey, it's, that was it's his you one. right now. He's the one that lost it and it flew into my car. <laughs> nice. Uh, so here here we are, Blue. Let's let's look at some maps real quick. So um, we know that Brian Koberger's phone turns off and they have him on camera around uh, Northeast Nevada Street, right? And this is where that is at. This is Northeast Nevada Street in Pullman, Washington. Now, um, he claims, or according to this, at some point he went to the Wawa Y Park, which is down here 
uh, left, which, by the way, here's the crazy thing. So the night of the murders, right, Brian Koberger has publicly stated that he was in the place where Ted Bundy is suspected to have had um, dumped the body of his first victim, Joyce LePage. What do you think about that, Blue? That's pretty interesting. Yeah, right. So, pretty, so he went to go he, play homage to one of his idols. And, and apparently he'd been out there a couple of times. Now, we know that he investigated um, or he studied serial killers, was, you know, studied under under renowned um, author and um, psychologist, Kathleen Ramsen, who, who basically wrote the book with uh, BTK. Um, yeah. The other thing is to remember when he when he drove back to um, uh, Pennsylvania, he took a weird took a weird route. Remember? Yeah. You know that weird route went to went through Colorado. Did you know that that's where where uh, Bundy went next to after Pullman, Washington? I think he went to Colorado. I, I, I had to do my studying. I did not know that. And, yeah, that's and where guys. He, he he does not mean the BTK Korean you know dance group you know he means <laughs> buying the, torture and you know the rest <laughs> BTK the serial killer okay but yeah don't, like um don't be singing K-pop singers to us <laughs> yeah this is um Joyce let's see where's it at right here a teenager searching for gemstones along Dry Creek bed found in LePage's skeletal remains hidden by a dense brush at the bottom of a deep ravine in Wall. Wawa Y Canyon, 10 miles southwest of Pullman. So this guy is, dude, I think this guy is literally effing with him. He's effing. He's basically saying that, oh, I wasn't there. I was in the same place where, um, you know, Ted Bundy was, where he, he killed his first people. Now, there's been a lot of um, similarities, right? Ted Bundy, he attacked the sorority house. Uh, BK studied... Uh, BTK, BTK's first kill was in 28. His first kills were uh, victims. I think there were four of them. All right. Yeah. Now yeah. they found shovels in his in his trunk. Israel, Israel Keys. Shout out to Jaime. He's the one who informed me about this. And he was like, man, you know, I think that what this guy is doing is he's been studying all these different serial killers and he's just taking piece by piece here and there. And he said, Dude, Israel Keys used to bury his kill kit in different places. He had different kill kits that he would bury out there. And he had shovels found in his vehicle. Right now, this is just me spitballing and speculating in the whole nine yards, right? And so. Yeah, yeah but in, in an area like that, you have a lot of places to to hide stuff throw, and bury stuff. So, Yeah, Those and he did, it, he did it across the country. So I wouldn't be surprised. If during that long ass trip that he went with his dad, if he stopped a few places and maybe buried something here, buried something there, you know what I mean? That or he could have just thrown it at a gas station on the way out. Nobody would know. Nah, what I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he knows exactly where it's at. That's why they had shovels, my man. I think he knows exactly where it's at and, and things like that. If he committed this crime, obviously. As the banner says, this is complete theory, our opinion, and speculation. Brian Koberger is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Now, this is the uh, Colorado um, connection. I say that's a Tacoma. I don't know what you're talking about, Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, this is where he claims he was at. All right. And, or where he would have, where he gone at some point in the night. Now, we know that he's over here. Uh, due to his phone pings later on when his phone does come on. We know that when he's entering into town, uh, that he's pinged also coming in and captured on surveillance cameras throughout town. So he, he, here's the problem with his story, though, Blue, is if he went to where he said he went, right? That Y-E-Y-E, -Y -E, whatever, Wawa. Wah wah why man such a damn tongue twister for me. I apologize, y'all. Wah wah why part and he was on North Stadium Way. This is the way you'd go, right? Boom, boom, yeah. boom. You'd, you'd go down North Stadium. Here's 270. This would lead you to Moscow. This is where um this is where 
prosecution we assume is alleging where Brian Koberger went in the probable cause affidavit. All it stated was that Brian Koberger went towards 277 or 270, which connects Pullman to Moscow. It doesn't necessarily say that he went down that road. Yeah. Okay. And so this yeah. is how you get to that park from there. And this was just that zoomed in area right here. All right. Yeah. See, Nevada Street, Wawa Y County Park. It looks nothing like the map that came out of the the GPS. I mean, uh, the the cell phone tower tra tracking. Right. So, so, so here's here's the problem, Blue. He got captured on camera here at Johnson Avenue at five twenty six. He got captured here going on North Bishop Street by some camera. I'm not sure which camera it was. It may have been um, one of these stores right here on the side or this store here. And then he's captured going up um, SR 270 and then up Nevada Stadium Way and, and all the way back to, to his, his apartment. Now, let me pull this up again. Right here, this is the turn onto Bishop Boulevard that he would have had to have turned. Yeah. Well, what, what happens, Big Blue? If when they go and look at these cameras, because he's seen on camera going this direction. Right. I can assume it's these cameras that they have him on and they see him going this direction instead of towards Bishop. No, this alibi is gone. Exactly. Yeah. And and here's the other thing. So let's 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 relook at this. Look at where this is at. Let me let me put this back to north. All right. You are on, I would say. What is this? Probably just slightly what east? You're east of Pullman. I mean, east side of Pullman. No, Pullman's right here. Yeah, you see Pullman right there. That's the center of Pullman. Uh, I would say this is southeast. In order to get through all this to get to, you know, Wild 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 Park, you'd have to go through Pullman. So we would have to believe that if he lost service there, that, um, he you lost know, service to the strongest part or the strongest place you would think you'd have service at. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like to have towers in that area, you would lose service more towards the south. Right. There and is I mean, no towers in the mountain areas. Right. And I would think also that if he lost service, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt then he's probably not the only one losing service and that there would be some sort of evidence of a loss of service. Yeah. I mean, I know when I gone through places and I lose service like that, right when you connect service, you get like 50 text messages at one time or whatever is waiting to come in because mm -hmm. they finally get enough internet to get, to get it through. So I would think his data would show like a big push of, of uh, information if he has some apps and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, we know that in the Murdoch case, they were able to tell whether or not Brian Co uh, Murdoch's phone was or the phones that were used were in portrait and landscape. If they were flat, place fat, flat down or if they were upward position, you know, when you turn off a phone or you put it into airplane mode, there's a couple of series of things that have to happen. Right. So when you turn off your phone, you have to hold down the turn off button then you have to press the button to OK the turn off. Uh, to yeah. shut the phone off and long are the days where you can just pull out the battery. So you think that the phone is going to have a record of that blue, it that should. the phone was turned off manually. You should have that. Right. Right. So uh, right now I think I can eliminate the fact that he was, he lost service because I think that's absolute. Tr that's just trash. It's a, it's a, completely dumb theory to think that he and he alone lost service in the middle of town. And nobody else did. And there's there's uh, AT&T, T-Mobile. None of these guys are coming forward, right? So <clears throat> I think it's either he turned it off or he put it in, in, in airplane mode, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? Do you think that there's a chance he lost service? There's always that possibility, but in the middle of town, hardly. I mean... It, if you're if you live there 
and your servers sucked that bad, you would either switch because he planned to stay there for a while. He would have been complaining already and looking for a new service provider saying, hey, I can't even make a phone call when I'm in the office or I can't even, you know, order my Uber Eats or whatever you can order through your phone because it's not working in town. Mm -hmm. So I think if it was that bad, he would have already got rid of it. He would have got a local plan. Yeah. Um, Or he would have, you know, got a better phone. Some of these new phones are really good compared to what they were 20 years ago. For sure. And, and, well, uh, well, he switched his his company. He 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 switched his carrier just before he sw- he went out there and he went towards AT and T. I assume it's because of the coverage issue. And when you see the the route that he took after the fact, yeah, um, see, like when he, when his phone does AT&T, come back on, he coverage maps. See what it shows. Well, well, hold on. Look, we know that his phone went through this entire area. This is not. A large wow. populated area through here without very with very little, you know, um, uh, loss of coverage. I'm, I'm assuming where you have these spots where they're dark, yeah, that he lost coverage there. I mean, you're looking at one spot here, one spot there out of this vast area, and you're telling me that he, he he's losing coverage inside of the town, yeah. Come on, man, man. Yeah, especially like I said, if you live there that long, you, uh, you as a college student, you use your phone a lot, man. It's, a lot of the information from the school comes through your phone. Yeah, and if you can't get it, especially if he's a, a teacher assistant, all his work emails and mostly through your through your um, work email, and it's mostly connected to your phone. So I believe. Right. Uh, I believe that that's not true, and I don't, and, I, and then what they need to do, and they probably have, is to go back and check his data for other days other than this night, and oh, to see I'm sure how. They have. And I'm pretty sure they they have his phone, and they can get um, a subpoena to test it in those areas to see what it does. And yeah. I would love to see those data. Well, I don't tell you what. Where he hid, or if there's anything that he hid somewhere, it's not going to be in Wild 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 Park. Uh, I'm not saying he didn't visit that place. He probably visited multiple places. Yeah. Right. And then he probably chose one. Right. He he went out jogging, running, whatever. Right. So what that tells me is that he was probably scoping out the place, looking for a place, go out there hiking, jogging, get familiar with an area. And then once he knew where he was going to be going, he started making routes on how to get there in different ways. Right. And and it's just my speculation here. And that way, um, when it comes time to the night of the, uh, that, it happens, you're familiar where you're going. You're not running those routes anymore. You're just trying to find and familiarize yourself with the route that you're running. So you don't have to you know, go and run those routes, which is why you're running and your hiking decreases and your drives increase because you're trying to find the most optimal route to get out of there without being viewed on camera. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And yeah. so let Let's continue this real quick, though. This says here, though, Blue, it says that Brian Koberger's mobile device did not travel east on Moscow Pullman Highway in the early morning hours of November 13th, and thus could not be the vehicle captured on video along the Moscow Pullman Highway near Floyd's Cannabis Shop. So let's go back to the map real quick. Oh, well, this thing seems to have frozen. Let me uh, remove it real quick. There it goes. Let me pull it back up. Oh, man. No, I think it actually kind of froze on me. I don't want to close it. All right. So <clears throat> I'm just going to wing it from here, though. So if we go back and um, let me just add this to the stage. Yeah, this thing froze. Well, that's okay. So this is here that. He did not travel east on Pullman Highway, right? In the early morning hours of November 13th. And they they probably have some sort of, I guess, oh, there it goes. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Cannabis shop. This cannabis shop right here is right before you get into, um, into Moscow. So they're arguing that he's not this vehicle here and that they're going to use the phone um, cast guys information to say that that's not him. My question to you, Big Blue, is why not 
use that same cast guy and his experience and say that he wasn't here at four o'clock. Yeah. The difference does it make? Because because if he's passing by the Floyd Cannabis Shop, right? Um, when does he see him leaving out? 250, 255. So if he's heading straight there, that's what, three o'clock, 305? You know, when he's passing by in front of that, that cannabis shop, what's more important to prove where he's at? Where he's at at three o'clock in the morning or where he's at at four o'clock in the morning? At four o'clock. So if they're not willing to show where he's at at four o'clock in the morning, what does that tell you, Big Blue? That they're trying to cover something. No, 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 no. no. If, if they're not willing to say we have data and points that show him somewhere else, you know, that means that he cannot possibly be the guy on King Road residence between 329 and 420. That that vehicle cannot be his. Why? Why can't they say that, Blue? Come on, let's think about this. Why can't they say that? Oh, because they got the phone pings on him on this one. No, no, no. It's because his phone isn't on, Big Blue. If his phone was on and he had something that this guy was able to determine that he wasn't over here with, oh, and he was able that. to determine, yeah. yeah, and if he was able to determine that at this point here, and they were able to argue, and they're arguing this, who cares about this? Where is he here? Why isn't the expert coming out and saying he wasn't there because he was over here at this time? Why does it make a difference what the prosecution has if they're able to determine using his ping data where he was at at four o'clock? Yeah. Because they can't. Yeah, I, I get that part. Yeah. It's like it's like the IgG crap when they were talking about the three unidentified male subjects DNA and they were real specific about one. One was inside of a glove, outside, blah, 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 blah. But the other two were real vague. Right. Well, it's probably because it doesn't align with things and including the fact that it mentions that they were unknown on December 17th. And when you go and read the New York Times article and you find out that the IgG didn't come back with Brian Koberger's name until December 19th. And then you realize that, well, shoot, then the, the DNA on the knife wasn't even known on December 17th. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's not known now. Yeah. It is no now. So. Mm, mm, mm. But like I said, if you're able to prove that he was somewhere else at, at another time, and if you're able to, and if his phone was off or his phone was disconnected or whatever the case may be, but and that, you're able to say that he wasn't here at three o'clock, why can't you say he wasn't here at three at four o'clock, and he was his cast, you know, pings and whatever puts him twenty miles away over here? It don't say that. It don't yeah. say that. And they don't say that. The only thing that they're trying to argue is that he was not in the vehicle that is on that highway in front of Floyd's cannabis shop on the way to Moscow after leaving south of of, of uh, uh, down towards 270. Now, remember, they want some information and they want some camera stuff. I guarantee you the camera that they want that they probably don't have and that they're, they, they, they want us, which is probably the reason why. They're not saying that that's exactly where he went or that's where he was at. And they say that at some point in the night that he was out that way is because if they say that he directly went that way and he's on this camera not going that way. Well, his uh, oh, not this one. I'm sorry. His uh, his alibi is shot. Right. We already determined that now. If for whatever reason, because they put this in here, it's stated here, it says, um, if it says additional information as to Koberger's whereabouts in the early morning progress includes additional analysis, Mr. Ray will be provided once the state provides discovery requested and now subject upcoming motion to compel. If not disclosed, Mr. Ray's testimony will also reveal that the critical exculpatory evidence further cooperating Mr. Koberger's alibi was either not preserved or was being withheld. So what they're saying is um, we want to see if this camera exists. If it does exist and it shows my client going this way, well, they technically didn't say that he did not go that way. All right. They're just saying that he didn't he's not the one on the Floyd Street or whatever. Right. But if it comes back and they actually have it and it shows this way, I, I, I feel that they're probably going to, you know, pull some stuff, you know, pull their pull what they're saying out. 
But if it does show that it goes this way, or let's just say it wasn't saved, right? Let's say it wasn't saved. They're going to argue that, no, he didn't go this way. He went this way. And that prosecution purposefully either deleted it because it showed their client going down Bishop Boulevard or it was accidentally never recovered. And it was exculpatory because he went down this direction and not down towards uh, Moscow, Idaho. You get what I'm saying, Big Blue? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's more than one video or, or picture because it's like, oh, like yeah. said, these are college towns, and fortunately, college students are mischiefs, man. There's always stuff they get initiated with, and they destroy things, and they get drunk, and there's cameras all over the place in some of these places. Yeah, yeah, which that's also going to bring up, you know, the exculpatory evidence that they have. Yeah which is a big bad big nothing goose egg if they don't have if his phone was off which again we can deduce that his phone was either off or not connected to the network because had it been on and ha had it or they've been connected to the network and or mr ray here had the ability to determine where he was at the time of the murders and show that he was not at that residence don't you think that's what they would be arguing in this situation versus an hour earlier in front of a cannabis shop outside of Moscow, still in Washington? Yeah, even even if they bring the witness out, right? And even if they go through that whole sh spiel about not being there an hour early, it only takes yeah. 12 minutes to get there. Exactly. Even so if maybe. you went to Waiwai Park at, at 247, you, you drive 10 minutes west, 10 minutes back, um you're, you're getting there probably about 3 30. Huh? when does it say that they saw him in camera at 3 26. yeah but it's not saying that he was never seen in town he just never seen they don't believe that's his car going in that route and it could be because his phone was off because maybe yeah. the camera is a good camera i mean it caught a good picture of the plate or a good picture of the driver uh, yeah i don't think it caught a picture of the plate yeah, I don't know. Maybe the driver. I know the ones here in town are pretty good because I, I get my mug shot all the time when I <laughs> I turn on a red light. Okay, it's red, but I turn on it because nobody's coming, and I still get a picture sometimes. Dang. So they said I didn't wait my three seconds. Stacy Cole came in with a 199 Super Chat. So I sent you an email today about the alibi expert not credible. Yes, we actually got that. Um, I was going to pull that up. But basically what it said was that this guy had... Uh, his his testimony was considered uh, junk science by courts already. I mean, first you have the other guy who's tainting the, the jury. You have this guy, um, was it Mr. Ray, who's already been told by a judge that his science is junk. And then you also had what, G Gabriela Vargas, who I talked with. And in my conversation with her, she she basically explained to us that the str profile and the igg profile are separate they don't have anything to do with each other and except for the fact that the igg profile or the igg to create that tree requires the str dna profile first you can't do it the other way around you can't create an igg and then figure out an str profile it's backwards yeah. and so basically in, in in our conversation which i should have brought it up it talks and she says they have nothing to do with each other. And so then that's when I say, well, then it wouldn't fall under the fruit of the poisonous tree. Yeah. And <laughs> it was a, so you have so far all of their expert witnesses. Uh, I don't know, man. Don't seem so. Doesn't seem yeah. like things are going in their favor. Well, here's the thing. I think the witnesses, the experts, they studied in their field and they're an expert in their field and whatever. Mm -hmm. But for what he's trying to prove, it's it's not that it's not credible, but it's not it's not uh, going to help the case any. Because if um, he goes up there because uh, you know his phone was off, so he can't prove that it wasn't wasn't or was him. Unless he has a picture of, you know, the exact license plate. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I know in some cases they do use these experts to 
build a case like they did in the Murdoch case, you know? So mm -hmm. I wouldn't call these guys as jokes or has been, you know, they, 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 they're experts. Right. I'm not but calling just, them jokes. What I'm saying yeah, though, is just, that it hasn't, it hasn't fallen in their favor. We yeah, can, yeah. Wicked Mena says, if law enforcement can put BK's phone at the scene, or can't because it was off, how can the expert put it at the park with it off? It's They don't put it at the park with it off. I think yeah. that's where, like, like uh, this is what I'm kind of referring to when you have this, you know, storytelling type or style theatric reporting right here and, and with the intent to captivate an audience, especially those that are, you know, looking for... Um, something saying that he, it was he's innocent it doesn't say this thing never says that they captured him the morning of november 13th in Y park wa 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 y park it says that brian koberger claims to well let me see let me first it says he drove throughout the area south it says here koberger was out driving in the early morning hours november 13th as he often did he drove the area south of pullman in washington west of moscow including wa 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 Wow, wow, why park? So right there, that doesn't say that the expert says that he ever went to the park. This is basically Koberger saying that he was driving west and and this. Now maybe it doesn't. I'll reread it again. Let's see. It says it puts the device south of Pullman, Washington, west of out, uh, Idaho, and it just says that he did not travel, you know, east on Moscow Pullman Highway in the early morning hours. So it doesn't even say that he was at the park when they claim he was at um in front of floyd's cannabis dispensary i don't i don't know what they're going to try to say at that point but it does not say that he was at the park it's just basically saying that because of what they do have that he isn't that vehicle now what they have i don't know but it, it, it doesn't say that he was pinged somewhere else that he was pinged specifically here right it talks about it beforehand it says that on numerous occasions, on several occasions, you know, he had photographs and 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 other things that were taken in November, depict, uh, you know, of the sky. But it doesn't say that, that he has any of those on November 13th. I mean, why wouldn't you put that in there? I mean, why if you're willing to put that there was photographs being taken, why not say, hey, there's a photograph taken of a night sky while he's at Wah 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 Park at 3.35 or 4 o'clock. Now, yeah. he's not connected to the network because it's off, but there is a timestamp. There's the picture. Here's the picture. He was there. But the fact that they're not saying that there's photographs that night and yeah. saying that they've taken photographs, what does that say to you, Blue? That says to me that he didn't take it. Uh, yeah, it's obvious because your phone always documents the damn time and date, even if it's not connected to the Internet. Mm -hmm. It might be the wrong time and date if it's off. Time, time wise, like, but it still documents something when you take something with it. Now, the other thing is, um, well, it's only going to be off on time and date if he left time zones. Yeah, that's, I mean, the time zone could be off. Well, I mean, that's if he left time zone. Like, for instance, if he's in mountain time or let's just say he's in central time and then he goes off the network and then travels into mountain time and takes a photo, goes back into, you know, central time. Uh, the timestamp on there is going to be an hour off because he traveled outside of time zones. But if he's in the same yeah. time zone, that's what I mean. It's not going to stop. It, the time still continues. Yeah, that's not going to be off because it could be a different zones. I don't know when the time zone line is there. No, nah, it's then, all. He's all the same. It's all the same. And the other thing is, on some of those parks, they close at sundown. They don't. They, allow, this one does at seven. They don't, they don't allow overnight people. Unless you you're in the park already and you got a permit or you're authorized to camp there, so by him saying that, they, there's not many cameras. His car wouldn't be able to go through the gate if it gets locked. I don't know if they lock the gates there or not. Some parks they do here they lock gates. You know what I mean? They do. And there's not many cameras at the gate at the guard houses to see who walks through. I mean they have cameras on some of the trails to see what animals come through at night so mm -hmm. the park can have its own surveillance footage that we don't know about well and that's why you wait shoot. this long blue i know it would shoot these guys alibi right out of the right out of the water 
Well, that's why you wait this long, Blue. You you, you continue to hold off. I mean, he's waited, what, two years now? Yeah. Almost two years? Why do you think he did that? Probably because, you know, if there are game trail cams out there and things of that nature that would have captured him on camera, you know, in those areas, well, that data is no longer exists. Yeah. Those those yeah. pictures are, take, are, are deleted. Now, if he was innocent per se he just screwed himself i mean royally because had he came up with this defense and said hey i was in that park on this day and time and you go check the the trail cams go check you know all those things find my white car there at three in the morning please but he's not he's waiting until that stuff is deleted and you can't prove if it was there or not yeah. Come on now, guys. If, if that doesn't say the, the MF is, you know, hiding some things and, you know, come on, come on. <laughs> I think I think my daughter that's 11 months old can see this. Uh, it's it's come on. Let's see. Yeah. Touch DNA. You have many people's touch DNA on you at this moment. But here's the thing. It was it was a knife sheath. Right. And apparently he purchased it in April of 2022. So it was fairly new. Um, those buttons are really tough. And I was watching a, uh, I think it was Nancy Grace, maybe. And she had some expert who brought up a K-Bar knife sheath. And he was talking about the DNA inside of the button. And he was explaining that, you know, especially on new ones, there's a lot of force that has to be put into it. And sometimes you can really rub your your, your thumb or your finger across the, uh, the lip there of the button snap that would really pick up a lot of skin cells. So skin cells would be considered transfer DNA. However, if it is like they can prove that it was scraped in there, that's a whole different ball game. You know what I'm saying, Blue? Yeah. Oh yeah. And in it, like here, Mark, I mean, Jeff, put on there saying that there's there is nine campsites there, and you got a paper car. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they have cameras, and I'm pretty sure if he was there, somebody. No, well, he's not. He didn't say he was camping. He just went for a hike. I mean, that's, uh, they really don't like people walking in the middle of these parks at night. Um, there is park rangers sometimes patrol. So I don't know. It just varies on what protocols that state has. Because I know um, I stayed at a few state parks, and when you walk up to the gate, even if you're like I'm, I, I made it late to one of the state parks, and my family was staying at. I had to like knock on the park ranger's door. At the office because this was the same office where they sleep at mm -hmm. to unlock the gate for me to get my car in there. But he's like, Yeah, I saw you on the cameras. I'm like, oh, like I guess it was motion or something. He saw me walking up to it because I couldn't get the damn gate open because it gave me the wrong code. Hmm. Well, I think, I think it would be pretty obvious though. Like, <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, this thing is pretty clear as day. I know there's a lot of people that question this stuff. I, I don't see the question, man. Like when it comes to like Richard Allen and you look at Elvis Fields and some of the things he said and you look at the law enforcement thing. And I don't really think him being where he's at is something that's real nefarious. I think that has more to do with him. Um you know, kind of going, kind of losing it a little bit and be needing to be in a place that can facilitate his needs. But yeah. the rest of that stuff, you know, yeah, it's real sus. I, I still think he's involved, but I think that there's probably more to it. But like even at him, he's already saying, it wasn't me. Look over here. It wasn't me. Look over mm -hmm. there. Brian hasn't said a word. No, nah, he's just, he's just waiting for everything that could prove that he's innocent to be um, destroyed or, or expired. You know what I mean? But in I'm this guilty. case I'm here, guilty. Guilty. You, yeah. you literally got, you have DNA, you got the guy's phone off, you have uh, video footage of his vehicle without the front license plate on. You have the phone evidence that puts that, that has his phone off during the commission of the crime. And you have surveillance of him driving into town uh, to, to show that how accurate that those pings are. And they got him where they say they got him. It's, I mean, I, I don't see this big avenue of innocence that some people see, man. Yeah. It, it, it's not, it's not, it's not, I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, that, everybody gets their opinion. So we'll see what the judge and the, and the jury says when they finally get to court, you know, next year, the year after. Who knows? This thing's going to get pushed back like, like everything else. Right. So Vic's logic says co worker don't have to prove bugger all. Uh, I think what she might be saying is he doesn't have to prove he's innocent, which is true. However, um, what he's what he's saying or what he's doing is basically like, you know, telling the police that hey, I didn't do this. I can prove I didn't do it, but you guys go figure it out because that's your job. How I didn't do it. I'll just stay in jail until you figure it out. It's, and if you don't, I'll prove it in court that it wasn't me. And thus far, I haven't seen anything, anything, not one ounce. I mean, maybe maybe the DNA thing not in the car, right? I think that's probably the most questionable thing. It's like, hey, there was no DNA in the car. But then you have like Chris Porco, who committed a crime just as violent with an axe and drove longer, three hours, um, you know, and he didn't have any blood or DNA in the car. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, most parks close at night where I'm from. Yeah, same here. Strava Strava app is the one that captures him running. And that jog that it captured him on, I believe, because there was one jog that I found on a Strava app. I, I, I'll, I'll see if I f still have it. I doubt it. Uh, but I'll see if I still have it that um, he had a uh, oh gosh there was one picture where he had ran but it was in Pullman it wasn't out in the middle of nowhere you know what I mean it was in Pullman so yeah. um, <laughs> BK's defender said cell phone data was unreliable now that this alibi comes out it is reliable I mean, it's the same thing when they say that Brian Koberger couldn't have cleaned up all the blood or DNA evidence out of his car in seven weeks, but but Dylan and Bethany can clean up an entire house in eight hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if I'm lying, let me know. Let me know if I'm lying. Let me know if I'm lying. Let's get some more likes up there, guys. Let's hit those like buttons. Let's get that going. We're going to have a members-only live a little bit later on this week, uh, well, probably on Sunday. I don't know if Big Blue's going to be a part of it, but I am. So make sure you go check it out. Uh, I'm going to scroll through this. If you have any questions for me and Blue, make sure you put a couple of stars there so that we, we can see them and we can answer them right away. And because um, if not, then I'm going to scroll through this and probably call it a night here pretty soon. All right, I scrolled all the way through. Uh, but yeah, Blue, so... So now that you've heard Brian Koberger's alibi, you've actually read it. We read through what it said and we broke it down piece by piece. We looked at the document that stated that basically it wasn't that Brian Koberger wasn't stalking when they were speaking, referencing to the survey, that it was Brian Koberger wasn't socially uh, on social media stalking um, one of the victims. It doesn't mean that he wasn't stalking more than one. I, I think that it leaves that avenue open. However, I do believe that Brian Koberger was not stalking any of the victims on social media. I do think, however, that he was in real life. What are your thoughts, Blue? I mean, I think he was in real life. You know, I think in social media, they already had mentioned that they didn't find anything. But that's, you know, who knows if he didn't create a burner account on a burner phone. Uh -huh. And he could have done that discarded it yeah um, you know that's why they they uh, promote a lot of the the vpn places on here where it jumps your router around and they right. can't track you so who knows if he has one of those a vpn router jump whatever they're called yeah the but there's a yeah. lot of tricks to be able to get stuff done and you know I just want to see this case, you know, go to court and see what happens. Yeah, you dude. know, you know, the justice for those kids and and they're not kids. I mean, they're they're adults, but to me, they're right. kids. And uh, you know, it's for those families to get some grief, you know, some of the grief over. It's not easy, you know, knowing 
that your child was taken from this world in that manner. And some people are out there talking about it like we do or celebrating about it like some other people do. And oh, yeah, dude. Like, it, it sucks. Um, my thoughts and prayers go out to them. You know, I'm glad you say that, bro. Because there, there are some people that, that that claim under the pretense that they're just, you know, out for justice and and that they hope that Brian Kubiger did do it because that means that they got it right and uh, they, they just feel that it's not um, that they don't think it's him though, but you know they want it to be him. Yet those are the same people when like if something comes out that says um, that they perceive as being in favor of him, they celebrate as if their favorite sports team scored a touchdown. You know. Yeah. You would think that, you know, every time something comes out not in the favor of the defendant, that they would be celebrating in that manner because that would mean that they got the right person. So to me, it's not about whether or not they have the right person or not. It's more about whether or not they're right, whether or not they have the right person or not. And that's what it's boiled down to. I mean, that's what I see in this all the time. People don't want to be wrong. You know, we said that it was um, Richard Allen by himself. Nobody else done, clear, guilty, throw away the key. And then as more information comes out, I still think he, he's involved, but I think there's more to it. You know, there's actually something that shows that and it's not the case here. Not at all. And um, Las Vegas, Layla says, I'm pretty sure that the PCS is suspect vehicle is not displaying a front license plate. It does say that I was trying to find it. Um, but it calls it suspect vehicle one. I know it says that there wasn't a front license plate, but there's also a, uh, a picture that Steve Gonzalez uh, released, uh, 156 from 1112 King Road Residence. And you're going to see uh, that car, the no front license plate, the fact that it doesn't have a sunroof, um, all those things in that one image when he does a, uh, a three point turn. It's pretty clear it's right there. Yeah. All right, so let's see. I'm going to look at some of these starred ones real quick. Daniel, do you really think that Ann Taylor would play that game with BK? Let's postpone till it works in my favor. Yeah, what else is not going to work? I mean, uh, if it's, if nothing else is going to work, yeah. I mean, this is a common tactic, you know, wait it out until people forget or start passing or um, things of that nature. Uh, I mean, if it, if it doesn't benefit his their client to go now, and they've already said that they anticipate, what, 28 years worth of trial with appeals and stuff they're in it for the long run so yeah yeah i, I would wait till they postpone it and if they're postponing it for so long uh, big blue what, what do you think that tells you if, if the defense is willing to postpone something and keep somebody in jail that they think is innocent i mean i think it's crazy that they would do that but and a lot of lawyers is a tactic to it's a tactic that some people do, I would say, it sucks to say it, but they're money hungry because the more you can sue them for, for false imprisonment, mm. the more money now, you can settle with later. That's yeah, but I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be in this case, man. This guy's yeah. life is on the line. If, if you have anything whatsoever that says you weren't there, and you're not willing to put forth it, and you're willing to wait and sit and let your client rot, that tells me that you're really not that confident in the outcome of the trial if it were to happen today and that it's best for you to wait until either you know like i mentioned memory starts to fade evidence starts to uh, dwindle away like for instance the fact that they took how long to say that he was in wawa y park probably I like i mentioned before probably because there's trail cams out there and things of that nature that could have captured that night and if he claimed that he was out there and they're not capturing him out there, well, shoot, says he's lying. So he can't say anything until those devices have run their course. Yeah, and most of the you time, you know what I'm saying. Most of the time, they would. If, it's like a if year they sometimes. Yeah, they would have said it earlier. You know, um, maybe those time loops and those cameras would have been kept, but you know, they get re-recorded on or they get deleted after a certain time. All right. Well, let me ask you this one question, Blue. If you were Brian Cobra, or let's just take Brian Cobra out of it. If, if you thought that there was a proof showing something in your favor, would you want that out there 
before it gets deleted or after it gets deleted? No, I would definitely want it before it got deleted. That way now, if there was evidence that you did do something, would you want it out there before or after it got deleted? It's definitely after. All right. uh, do you think that anybody probably age three or four could understand that question? I would say more like seven, ten. They would understand seven or that. ten, seven or ten. All right. Well, still yeah. a child. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to, you know, see the camera footage where I saw you take the cookie out the cookie jar? Admit now, or you know, they hold off until oh man, I accidentally deleted it. It got recorded over. <laughs> Next. Exactly, exactly. It's it's ridiculous. But what this also tells me, though, Big Blue, is that uh, he probably did not discard anything near the wah 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 part. No. You know what I mean? He I probably he went just, over there, but he didn't do anything there. I think he's just saying that to, um, because it's throwing everybody else off to another side, and that there is proof of him driving up from that side. Mm-hmm. So at least he can tie that in together. Nah. I mean, he's literally saying he was at the place where, you know, um, where, I mean, he literally is where Ted Bundy started his serial killing career. And very, a lot of, very, a lot of similarities, man. A lot of similarities. Makes you wonder. Makes you wonder if, if this guy idolized these guys. I mean, you have so many similarities. You have the law enforcement background and was a Golden State killer. Uh, you have, you know, the he's a PhD student in criminology. Um, freaking uh, Ted Bundy was a was a law student. You know, so there's the smarts. You have the sorority. You have the uh, Ted Bundy. You have Pullman, Washington, Ted Bundy. You have him claiming he was at the place where the body was found. Where Tim Ted Bundy's first victim's body was found, allegedly. You have him going through Colorado where Ted Bundy went to afterwards. You have, um, you know, so many things out there that just kind of align. Oh, BTK, 28 years old, four four victims his first time around. Brian yeah. Koberger, 28 years old, four victims his first time around. Get what I'm saying? Like, and 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 then we find out that he studied serial killers. So you, you mean to tell me that this is just some sort of coincidence that the person who studied serial killers, who's accused of committing a very heinous crime, uh, is it has some similarities with other serial killers? Like, like that's all supposed to be just some sort of big coincidence? Yeah, no, it is. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy indeed. Well, guys, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We're going to be out of here now. We'll be back on Sunday, or I'll be back on Sunday to do the Members Only Podcast, which will air out on Tuesday on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast if you can't catch it on the member side only. But if you are a member, you get to participate in that live. We'll do a QA, and a I'll answer everybody's questions and comments and theories and thoughts that want it to go, come up. I know that many times... A lot of the live chat is discussion amongst yourselves, which is a huge part of the community. And we appreciate it. And we appreciate y'all's discussion. It gives us ideas and topics and things that we may have missed. Because at the end of the day, like Brian Koberger, myself and Big Blue are human. We make mistakes and sometimes we miss things and don't see them. And so, you know, our mods and, and members help us out with those type of things. Wouldn't you agree, Big Blue? Yeah. Thank you, guys. They do a lot. All right, everybody. Y'all have a good night. We'll see you Sunday. Peace. Peace out, guys.